reason I'm talking about multi-path TCP and quick, um, quick UDP internet connections is because these are some shifts to the way that the internet works, largely web browsers. And the, they've done that for a few different reasons. It's to make it so that pages load faster, but also particularly for mobile users that as you're moving networks or if you've got multiple connections, that it uses them all properly and it's not stopping and changing and starting again every time you shift the network. Or if your Wi-Fi drops out and you know, everything stops working, it takes time to start up again. These protocols enable it to just keep working over as long as any of them are available. When you're talking about network security and how these protocols affect them, it's actually quite a complicated question because it comes down to perspective. From a user's perspective, they own the traffic and they want it to get to the other end. From a network operator's perspective, they want to understand it, to stop malicious traffic being uh, transiting the networks or entering their networks, or to have an understanding of what's going on. However, when the internet was first designed, it was just get a packet or some data from A to B, and if you get problems along the way, you route around them. But the way we do network security generally is we look at things, we decide if we like them before we send them on their way. And the reason that multi-part technologies impact that is because they detect a path that is misbehaving, they deprioritize it, and they start using the ones that just send their traffic through in a, quick t in a speedy time or with no changes. So for a network operator, if you start trying to do too much to the traffic, it'll stop using your network. But even, even more than that. So I said that it can use all of the connections. It shares their bandwidth. And so it can send and receive data across them in parallel. The result being, if you're looking for A, B, C, D, well, it's not sending it across one link, it's going A, B, C, D, and each operator or each network will only see a fraction of that. We're familiar with this in, um, in network security for you know, 20 years, where you would fragment in time, you'd across packets, you'd take something, you'd chunk it, you'd chunk it, you'd chunk it. But what this does, is it adds an additional dimension of fragmentation, it's not just that way, it's sideways. And that really gives us problems any time we're trying to do inspection because we don't architect for that. We architect so that there's a connection or there's a flow, that's where all of the data is going. But if you're using the network efficiently or using multi-path technologies, it's using all of them. And if you don't see them all, you may not be able to make sense of that data. So Quick is implemented in user space, so in web browsers. It's in Chrome and Chromium, source code's out there. Um, Multipath TCP is implemented in the kernel of an operating system. That's why it's a bit slower. It needs to be put into Linux or Windows or Mac OS. And to a various degree it is, but it's not being used. These technologies are designed to run across a network whether or not the operator knows. They fall back to TCP silently, act as they always have, but when they are working, the operator does not have to enable them. They just work. So. The question may be, why would an operator block or not block them? And that's far, far more complex because that really comes down to ownership of the data, business, jurisdiction and legal issues. As an operator, you sort of have to decide a balance between giving the users a high degree of freedom and having a high degree of control and resiliency in your network. And with multi-path technologies, that balance has shifted towards the user experience somewhat. And depending on what your market is, that could be exactly what you want. You want a very fast network with good user experience. But in other spaces, you're going to want it so that the network is stable, particularly like difference between selling to a corporate or selling to an end user, an ISP. And that makes a big difference, particularly if your competitors allow these and you block them. And people are trying to work out, well, why does my phone work great on that and not on your competitors or vice versa? We saw a similar thing with some cellular technologies where your phone, and this became various marketing in different countries, where your phone might be able to use the internet while you're on a call or not. And that seems like a minor thing. But to some users, that's a big, big experience change. And in the same way, if one operator has really seamless roaming on their network between Wi-Fi and cellular, that could be a great thing for their users. Conversely, though, particularly if you're charging for data, the incentives get more complicated because your users may shift to a cheaper system and that, that could have impact your revenue. Or they could unknowingly use your metered connection and incur bill shock where they think they're on wireless 
but the wireless is misbehaving, so it's routing most of the traffic through cellular, and they get a huge bill. This stuff is complicated, because it's, it's less about the technology and more about the business models and the trust models inherent in our networks.